Here we go! Hey, what's up, Blue Blurs? Bit of Gamer like 90 your proud chief of the Blue Blurs, who has just been treated with a legendary SEGA sound effect that preceded every classic Sonic game in the Legendary Trilogy. That's just not one of those sound effects you ever want to forget, man. It just isn't, especially if you've grown up listening to it. And don't get me wrong, I enjoy the updated sound effect that's affiliated with the current SEGA logo of today, but... Man, that's the stuff of legends right there, and I kind of wish I would go back to it at some point, but, ah, well. Anyway, guys, welcome back to my channel. For this video, we're going to be kickstarting a second playthrough, and before you go yelling about it, yes, I know, I've already got a playthrough going with Sonic Unleashed on my Nintendo Wii, I haven't forgotten about it, and I'll still be updating it regularly. Worry not. But I did promise my people three playthroughs, and Sonic Unleashed on the Wii was just the first of them. This right here is the second. And it's for a game that I never ever thought I would get to cover on any channel, purely due to an availability issue that was only resolved recently. Now having said that, I'm sure you're pretty confused because, well, this is Sonic 1, and what Sonic enthusiast hasn't played Sonic 1? For that matter, what 30-year-old Sonic enthusiast didn't originate from Sonic 1? <laughs> Well, yes, I have played Sonic 1 a truckload of times, why would I not have? But, you may have noticed some subtle edits to the title screen. Though the dead giveaway to the fact that this is not the same old Sonic 1 you may be familiar with from the days of the Sega Genesis. What this is, actually, is the mobile re-release of Sonic 1, which came out in 2013, alongside that of a similar port for Sonic 2. Both of those were made by the very man that gifted us with Sonic Mania, and that is Christian Whitehead. I knew about the mobile re-release of both these games when they came out at the time, but due to the fact that you had to play them using touchscreen controls on your phones at the time, I was like, mm-mm-mm-mm-mm, you can miss me with that. Uh-uh, no, touchscreen controls are the devil. <laughs> now, I can handle Nintendo Wii remotes, I can handle Joy-Cons, as much as I would definitely prefer to use this whenever I can, cause, ugh, I don't like Joy-Cons. But, touchscreen controls on phones, mm -mm -mm -mm. nope, 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 that ain't gonna work, you can forget about it. And as well, I just assumed that they were the same old version of Sonic 1 and 2, but just port it over to phones and give them widescreen support to make them a little bit more up to date. But upon consulting footage on YouTube, I quickly realized how wrong I was, and that was when I started fretting about the fact that these were never ported to PC. Like, we technically already had Sonic 1 on PC, but it's not the up-to-date version that the mobile version introduced back in 2013. Yes, I know I'm using the word version an awful lot, but I'm not sure how I can work around that. <laughs> so bear with me, please. But yeah, I quickly realized how much I was missing out and fretted over not being able to play it, without the need for touchscreen controls. Up until Rubber Duck Cooley came along. Or is it Rubber Ducky Cooley? I don't really know which version of his name that he prefers given his Twitter page, but we'll just go with Rubber Duck Cooley. He came along and decompiled the mobile versions of Sonic 1 and 2 so that they are now playable on PC. The PC ports we have always wanted are finally here, if only in unofficial capacity, and that is exactly what I am going to be showcasing in this video. But before you go dismissing it as just another carbon copy of Sonic 1, you should have already realized my title screen, but this does have quite a number of differences, including a remastered soundtrack. It's mostly faithful to the original, but it comes with some very subtle tweaks that make it a bit more up-to-date with today's technology. And while it won't be immediately apparent to you at first, the more you play this, the more that it will become clear to you. And you can also take Tails along for the ride, as you may have just realized. You can even play as Tails himself if you prefer, or better yet, the legendary redhead Echidna, knuckles <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start the game, so I can be forced to stare at the demo clips all night, because that gets boring really, really fast. 
But yeah, what makes the mobile version so special is that they basically take elements from all three of the classic Sonic games that make up the Genesis trilogy, Sonic CD aside, and bring them all together into two glorious packages. Although that number should have been three, but a mobile port of Sonic 3 just hadn't happened at the time. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And I could go on and on about how it's so shameful, but Sonic 3 keeps getting neglected, but let's not go down that road. The point is this. The mobile reimaginations of Sonic 1 and 2 were a lot more expansive than I initially anticipated them to be, as they come with an expansion in the gameplay. You can take along Tails' partner character, you can use other characters, you can even use the spin dash and the insta shield. Go away, Buzz Bomber. And you can even use the elemental shield from Sonic 3. I don't imagine this is a site you thought you'd ever see in Green Hill Zone, is it? Because the elemental shield never existed up until Sonic 3. So, this is kind of a treat. The only other time you would ever see this site is in Sonic Mania, which is of course a celebration of all the classic Sonic games, and you would get the Elemental Shield in Green Hill Zone. Speaking of which, Mania's Green Hill was a beautifully executed reimagining of the stage, and I absolutely love it. And right now, I'm falling in love with mobile re-releases as well. When they first came out, I went all in on them and didn't go to bed until 6am that night. Or should it be that day, since 6 a.m. is not exactly a nighttime hour, <laughs> but you know what I meant. The very point I waited for, and it's finally here. And I am more than happy to be covering it on this channel. If you're as excited as I am, show me your enthusiasm with your likes and comments down below. And to keep up with the series, hit that sub button and ring that bell so you don't miss out on anything at all. Okay, uh, can we, um, bring all of these rings up to us using the electric shield? Oh god, almost lost my footing. God, the alone dramatically transformed the Sonic 1 experience because it wasn't initially made with elemental shields in mind. Or for that matter, any of Sonic's abilities. It is like the origin point of Sonic, so I don't imagine that Sega had any concept in mind up until the later Sonic games happened, so... This is gonna take some getting used to. <laughs> but yo, I welcome this opportunity. Um, I wonder if we can break 200 ring before you finish the first act. If you're wondering, the state of Sonic 1 had not changed at all other than the widescreen support. They're the same as far as their layouts are concerned. Nothing about them has changed. However, as I quickly realized from being Green Hill Zone, they have made some interesting tweaks to the bosses. And you're going to see the first of those tweaks at the very end of this video, because just like before, I'll be covering one stage per video, so this will be a six-part playthrough. And hopefully this is one that won't end anytime soon, but considering you are playing Sonic 1, which is a tragically short game, I can't make any promises. But yeah, we have broken 200 rings! <laughs> Not a common sight in Sonic 1, but there you go. And we're gonna go ahead and finish off the first act by jumping into a special stage ring. The special stage in the cells are the same as well, so yeah. You can already tell, but there's gonna be quite a headache coming our way. Luckily for me, I've played with them so many times that they're not gonna really bother me. But, at the same time, I have to be careful. <laughs> I can never put this into words, but when it comes to being what we'll call a Let's Player, or an LP'er, um, there's this weird curse that happens. Like, whatever you... You truthfully state that there's a section of a game you've played so often that it doesn't really phase you anymore, then you try to showcase that same display of skill on YouTube or otherwise in a public setting, and suddenly you start messing up. And everyone just looks at you like, Dude, you lied to us? <laughs> oh, oh god, no, 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 no. And just like that, I'm already nervous. No, give me ammo, please! Thank you! <laughs> oh gosh. The way we special stays control, I can never get over them. One of the few things that Sonic 4 did right, and yes, I understand that not many of you are fond of Sonic 4, and I realize why, but one of the few things it did right was making me special stages in the first episode a lot more controllable. So yeah, I definitely prefer their take on this kind of special stage. Anyway, we got the first Chaos Emerald, and I forgot to mention, but in the mobile re-release, you can get 7 Chaos Emeralds and acquire your Super Form. That said, the way to get it isn't entirely clear to me. Like, I did a little research on the subject, and apparently, you have to go through a no-save file and use the level select code to access the 7th special stage. And in the game options, you can also select, um, Super Form so that they are enabled. But the thing is, we're playing on a save file right now, so I'm wondering, 
Since Super Forms are enabled, if we beat the six special stages that were originally made for Sonic 1, will it in turn unlock the seven, or do I absolutely have to use a no-save file? At this time, I don't have an answer to this question, so I'm gonna pretty much be finding that out in this series. That said, if worst comes to worst and the seven special stage doesn't trigger immediately after we get the six emeralds, I'll just go to the no save mode and do it anyway while we're finishing up this series because I refuse to end this on anything less than a high note. Come on, Super Sonic and Sonic 1, I know it's a sight you want to see as well, and it was one of those things I especially regretted not being able to experience once I realized that the mobile prepackaging for Sonic 1 was a lot more than I anticipated it to be. As far as the stages themselves, they are completely the same, nothing about them has changed at all. Same special stages, pretty sure I said that earlier. But even then, the inclusion of these shields and the expansion of the Chaos Emeralds from 6 to 7 definitely transforms the game for me. This is gonna be something else. Alright. If you're wondering, I decided to just go to the bottom section, because as short as these stages are, I want to experience them as much as I possibly can. After all, this isn't a speed run, so I want to show off as much as I possibly can, you know what I mean? What I don't like, though, is having to deal with those bad dicks, as they are a pain in my quills. Yes, I said quills. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you didn't realize, I kind of pulled off a Sonic Boom-esque sort of wardrobe, as you can see from this little mask I've got around my neck right here, which looks more like a scarf, honestly, that is, in fact, a Sonic mask that can actually be worn in one of 12 different ways, so it's not so much specifically a mask as it is just headwear. And it is pretty cool. I've had to wear with whenever I go out in public, and hey, I guess I get to go out in style. <laughs> Alrighty, 140 rings, and we're taking a little bit longer than is necessary on the second act, but yo, before we finish the second act, let me backtrack a little bit to show you all something, because I realized I just glossed over it. Come on, Tails, don't die on me. There we go. Now, when you come to this little curve, look at the lower right of the screen, and you can actually see the ground, that the spike bed at the bottom is embedded in. You go a little bit more to the right, and if you're quick enough, you can catch a brief glimpse of the ground before the screen moves upwards to reveal the rising platforms. Of course, if you fall under the platforms, you will die as it'll count as being um, off screen. But the thing is, there doesn't seem to be an empty pit there up until you get high enough to move the camera upwards, and you do fall off the camera, you die. So I found it pretty fascinating to be able to see this at all. Like, I don't think this was a site that was originally possible without the widescreen support from back in the days of the Genesis. For the first time I saw it, I blinked and was like, whoa. Pretty fascinating what the um, upgrade to widescreen will do for classic games like this. <laughs> Am I right? And speaking of an upgrade... Yo, look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh, wait, come on. No! Can I not get up there? Hold on. Let's try a spin dash jump. Mm -mm -mm -mm. There we go. We can still double jump with the electric shield after a spin dash jump. And it allows you to get here to this upper area, directly above the tunnel that would take you to the end of the stage. This is an area that I originally didn't know existed. Although debug mode existed then, so I probably could have used that to do a little bit more exploring, but it was never something I ever, ever thought to do back then. But of course, if we now have the electric shield and tails at our side, this area is now accessible to us, so this <laughs> is pretty cool, am I right? We're gonna jump in the second ring to get the second Chaos Emerald. And hopefully by the end of this series, no, definitely by the end of this series, we'll have all seven. There's no question there. Ah, the good old extra life sound effect. What were we up to eight lives? I mean, we haven't even got to Green Hill at three. That's crazy. <laughs> but we're going a little bit too fast. Maybe we need to slow it down a notch. Ah, just kidding. We're Sonic fans. We're not known for doing slow unless we're playing Sonic 06. Yeah, that's a bit of an overdone reference. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to flame on Sonic 06, honestly. I don't fondly remember the uncontrollable curve that occurred at the Wave Ocean stage, and I definitely don't enjoy the slowness of that game. Speedrunning strategy aside! And I also don't enjoy being about to fall headfirst into that goal, but thankfully, we averted that catastrophe. But yeah, what little I've experienced of Sonic 06, I don't fondly remember, but I mean... It could be worse now that I'm looking back at it. And now it's a game that I want to be able to finish. 
But don't worry, one of those days will ease those regrets, just like how I'm easing my regret of having never originally played Sonic 1 on my phone when it first came out. Again though, the touchscreen controls turned me off, and one solution I tried to implement before the release of the decompilations was connecting a PS4 controller to my Android phone using Bluetooth connectivity. And, uh, I'm gonna give you some advice right now. Don't do it. Bluetooth is not known for being sturdy at all. And it probably didn't help that I was trying to play on an Android phone that was on its way out. Like, I couldn't even use it without leaving it on the charger. That's how dead it was. Although, now that I have an iPhone, I might get different results if I use Bluetooth connectivity, but either way, the need for that is completely invalidated by the existence of this decompilation. And thank goodness for that, because it felt awfully weird using a controller on my phone. That said, I was willing to take the risk rather than dealing with touchscreen, but upon having my inputs come out like a full second later, I was like, mm -mm -mm -mm, forget about it. You'll have to forget about it. And... Now that I'm thinking about it, a similar mobile remaster was made for Sonic CD as well. And that too came over to PC, but they decided to leave similar versions of Sonic 1 and 2 in the dust. How inconsistent is that? But I get it's keeping in line with the Sonic series as far as being inconsistent, so... There you have it. Alright. Gonna pick up a couple more rings, and we're already there close to the end of the third act. The stages are the same, so it isn't going to be a long series, unless I'd like for it to be the opposite scenario, but what are you gonna do? Seriously, though, the existence of the electric shield for this game... <laughs> and look at that. Nine extra lives. We're totally gonna ace this series, man. And we got the invincibility right before the boss battle comes up. But if you recall, I said earlier that the bosses play slightly differently. On the Sega Genesis, you go in and get some first hit against the boss before the battle actually started, but when you're playing this version, you don't get to do that. The game is like, nope, you gotta play this boss fair and square. You'll only get to do damage when the fight actually starts. But when you consider that we have the electric shield at our disposal, maybe fair and square isn't the correct phrase to use here because I don't think the electric shield made it fair at all. <laughs> So you want to take away our ability to land some first hits against Eggman before the checkerboard ball comes out? <laughs> Alright then, I'm totally down for that. You're still gonna lose anyway, Egghead. <laughs> but yeah, two Chaos Emeralds in our pocket, and that is it for the iconic Green Hill Zone, as well as the first video in my playthrough of Sonic 1, as playable on the mobile version, and now on PC. And in this video, well the next video, excuse me, we're gonna be going through the Marble Zone. Sonic, yes, I know. I don't like this stage any more than you and Tails do, but we're just gonna have to deal with it. That said, maybe Spin Dash will make it a little more bearable, as well as all the other benefits allotted to us, but who knows, right? Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, let me know with your likes and comments down below. And to keep up my content, you just gotta hit that sub button and ring that bell. And you better do it fast, or Sonic will hit you with additional... You're too slow! Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys when we go through the Marble Zone, or whenever I update another of my playthroughs, whichever it may be. You will just have to see. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Blue Blur is my life. Take care.